The next thing we're going to do is consider another integral. Let's consider where, of course, the integral or the, the derivative of the, um, the derivative actually exists also. But let's say we were able to differentiate our function L with respect to Y. And of course, integrate that with respect to Y between the limits of Y1 of X and Y2 of X. What would happen? Well, this is a pretty trivial integral to evaluate. And of course, what we get is L a function of X and Y evaluated at the endpoints. In fact, it's the exact same as what we found a moment ago. So what we really see is that this expression up here is the integral with respect to x of this particular expression here. Putting it all together, the closed line integral in an anti-clockwise direction of the vector field P, which only has an i hat component, with uh, dot dr is equal to minus the integral with respect to x going from a to b of L, a function of x and y1, excuse me, y2, minus L, a function of x and y, y1, is equal to minus the same integral, but where, where we can rewrite it as the integral from y1 of x to y2 of x of del L, del y, dy. And you might be saying to yourself, why are we bother doing, bother doing this? It looks like it looks like a, re a real sleight of hand. The use of this will be very clear in a moment. So let's just write the whole thing again. So I've rewritten it down here. And I've put, in, uh, excuse me, I've put, in, I've put both of my integrals together. So we have our minus sign and we have both integrals, one res with respect to x and the other with respect to y. So really what we have is the double integral with respect to x and y of the function del L del y, in, uh, evaluated at different points. More compactly, we can rewrite this instead of using the double integral. I prefer just to have a single integral uh, sign, but use this s to imply that we're talking about a surface integral or a double integral. And instead of saying dA, well, we say that dA is equal to dx dy. This, of course, is a surface integral. So this closed line integral here is rewritten as a surface integral. It is equivalent to a surface integral. Now, the geometry of this will become, uh, will become evident later, and it's not something I'm going to discuss at this particular point. So to remind ourselves, we had a two-dimensional vector field, which only had an i hat component. We took a anti-clockwise closed path. We split it into two, uh, two particular paths, y1 and y2 of x. And when we looked at the closed line integral, we saw that it is equivalent to a surface integral of the function del L del y. How is it that we can interpret this geometrically? Well, let's say we had y, which is a function of f of x. Well, we need x to get y, so we're talking about a two-dimensional function. Well, z is a function of x and y, so this is a three-dimensional function. This means that the surface, or the double integral, will calculate the value for z at every point x, y in the surface S. But the surface S is nothing more than the area of the line integral which we started with. Let's say that again. The surface integral will calculate the value for z at every point x, y in the x, y plane which is inside the surface S. But the surface S is nothing more than the area of our line integral. So therefore, including z, we are getting a three-dimensional volume. The height of this three-dimensional volume has the functional form del L del Y, or if we, could re if we want, we could rewrite it as del P of X Y del Y. So we're actually talking about a three-dimensional function here. We have the, the surface which lives in the X Y plane, function of X and Y, 
but there's a certain amount of height associated with this which and the value of that is del l del y 